You thought you were gonna actually get through all of that, but you didn't! All right, friends, before we do anything else, let me know what you think of my audio situation right now. Am I too loud? I bet I'm too loud. I think I'm too loud. I can turn it down a little bit. So the thing is, most likely, there's gonna be singing on this stream today. So I gotta make sure that I'm not going to break anything. Ooh, somebody's speedrunning this game. Well, rest assured, I will not be speedrunning this game. Although, it still technically counts as a speedrun because I suplexed a phantom train, right? That's, that's the official, we've concluded, that's the thing. All right. Oh, man. I need to get a harp friend. So I can cover this. I think I said that last time. Because you hear those flutes. That's how I know. So I know it's for Lawrence. But there's also this. Oh my god. There's such good music. I've been working on. Ah! No? That's not working. Okay. I've been working on putting together what I thought was going to be a, like maybe a single or an EP. Might be bigger than that. Final Fantasy VI Flute Choirs. Um, I got like seven tracks kind of in progress. If you're on my Patreon, you get to uh, help weigh in on what you think I should cut was what I was originally asking. But the only response I've got so far has been like, don't cut anything. And I'm like, oh, well, I guess I might as well add a few more then. <laughs> you know, like, if, uh, if it's, like, because seven isn't really the number of tracks for a thing. Seven is too many for an EP, but too short for an album. So you either cut, like, two or three, or add three. <sighs> so I guess I might add things. Try not to go overboard, though, because I want to actually... Oh no, Blue Glass, did I? Well, I guess we'll go back to Zozo then. No, we're gonna run from this guy. <laughs> Edgar's just like, peace out, everybody! Uh, I have to remember how to get where I'm going. I don't wanna do this, but I guess I have to. I think this is the right place. Oh, no, it's not. Zozo, I don't like you. Off to a good start. Oh, that was right! Really? Okay. So I go back in there. You would think I just played through Zozo. Surely I'll remember. Nope. You would think that, and you would be wrong. I don't know where I'm. Oh, nah. Have you ever seen me fiddling over this way, by the way? That's where my audio interface is. Oh my god. Um. So, Secret of Mana 1, um, which is Second in Setsu 2, is the one that came out to the US. Um. So Second and Setsu um, 1 actually was released in the US, um, it's a Game Boy game, and it was released as, I think that's Final Fantasy Adventure, just like Final Fantasy Legend. Maybe I have those backwards, maybe Final Fantasy Legend is Second and Setsu, and Final Fantasy, um, oh wait, I'm fighting, okay, I didn't mean to fight the Gigas, but it's okay, it's fine. Yeah, so Final Fantasy Adventure, and Final Fantasy Legend is the Saga series. Um, yes, still in Light and I are on the same page. Um, so my sister and I played Secret of Mana obsessively. Um, it is probably the game that I have the highest number of hours compared to how many hours it would take to beat the game. Um, of any game ever. My sister and I got multiple, um, optional, uh... So in the Mana Fortress, if you... Oh, oh no, my party's dead. 
what I get for not paying attention to what I'm doing! I'm getting dead because you're <laughs> trying to talk about other games. Well, that's alright. I didn't need my party to be alive anyway. <laughs> oh, right, Lauren, you're playing video games. You should pay attention to your video game. Don't be ridiculous. Uh, no, not lock. Um, uh, um, but yeah, so my sister and I maxed out optional stuff in that game, which is to say, yes, I know Secret of Mana very, very well. Um, I've even had dinner with the composer, Kikuja-san. Um, Dragoon boots. Oh, I suppose there are uses for that. Who has those harvesters? Those are the guys with the things in the back. Are slam dancers worse if they don't have any friends around? I remember the right way to do this. Did I do this? No, I didn't. Monster in a box? Didn't think I did that. Okay. Okay, fine. Fine. Oh, does that look a mug? Sell it a mug. Should I do that? I should probably do that. Alright, lock. Alright. I don't usually steal with him, as you've noticed. Capture. Oh my god, it's called Capture! I forgot! <laughs> Because we can't have our heroes mugging. That would be dreadful. You know? That's not what heroes do. That's what villains do. Anyway. <laughs> uh. See, this is why I don't steal. Well, we'll just try to steal while we're doing this. Oh, I suppose that's true, Stolen Light. I hadn't even thought about that. Is that a phrase, two bites at the apple? second in set C3 because my sister and I imported it. We imported the Super Famicom game um, and then tried to play it with the translation we printed off the internet. Um, they're remaking it. I don't like the direction they're taking with it. Like, it looks way too... I Okay, so the reason why I like second in set C3 is because it's melodramatic and super melodramatic and also melodramatic and tragic. Um... Do they steal back specifically because I've been stealing, or is it just that they do stealing? God, I need to re-dye my hair. Look at this. 
I'm trying to not dye my hair because my hair has gotten really thin and it bugs me. And I'm hoping if I don't bleach or dye my hair. No, man, Hawkeye, Hawk. Hawk is my favorite, and Race. I don't remember how, like, I don't know how they have officially decided to translate her name. Is she Lisa? Is she Race? Race was her name originally. What am I doing? Oh! Oh, now I remember what I'm doing here. I am equipping espers. Right? But the problem, serious thing, is that they don't seem to realize that the melodrama and tragedy are the things to love about that. So I watched a video, like the sneak preview video thingy, and it's like got bad anime voice acting, really poorly animated facial expressions and movements. Um, everything feels really flat and poorly translated and poorly delivered. And I don't know, it seems like a super mediocre Enix brand JRPG from the like Xbox 360 slash PlayStation whatever that was era. Oh, well, race is really tragic. Then Hawk is potentially more tragic. Although everybody's super. Yeah, I might try that. So like the part of the problem with the mana games or the second and fifty games is that they um they're really badly designed. I love them anyway. Yeah, I never fully got to appreciate that because even when I finally played a translated emulated version of that game. Yes. Sorry. Ba-dum, 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 ba-dum. Maybe... Lock it. No, oh, no, I'm trying to have conversations and things. Here we go. Yes. Oh, yes. Salvin definitely needs more HPs. Please don't murder me. Oh, it doesn't have anything, lady. You don't carry any stuff around, do you? You're gonna kill me, aren't you? Jeez. That's okay, we got it. I thought I could kill her before she killed me. That is technically correct. It's just the one that needs to get healed. Sorry, friend. Uh, you're gonna have to give me some examples of what you're talking about, Second Wind. Oh, jeez. Wow, okay. Okay, blue glass. That's, that's a good idea. I just really wanted her to get it, and she's... Oh, she's not that close, actually. Alright, who else wants to do that? What else are you going to do with your magic, buddy? How close are you? Eh. True, let's just like have everybody learn that. Why not? Uh... 
I didn't talk to my party members because I thought that was just gonna make it so that I, um... Alright, Locke. I'm told you might be useful here, friend. Okay, nope. I love you, Locke. I do. You're my favorite character. Oh, buddy. I don't pick my favorites based on usefulness. I don't think that Final Fantasy IV was the only one that got a 3D remake, although it's the only one of the ones that got a 3D remake that I know the game and care about, because I think they gave a 3D remake to um, 1 through 3, right? But I've actually never played 3. Um, Alright. Come on, Lock, you can do it. Okay. So I haven't played the secret secret of mana. It's singular, not secrets. I haven't played the secret of mana. Um Ah, okay. Oh, this is nice. They take you out of the so-so so you don't have to actually fight your way back down. Alright, so here's the story scene I forgot. What are you even doing, Gao? Gao doesn't need stairs. <laughs> Did you see that? He just, like, jumps down. It was surgery. So by this they mean put characters in your party and characters not in your party and I'm like... I never did get... Oh, maybe I'll grab my old sketchbooks. If you guys want. Okay. Sorry, literally everybody else, but I could put you in the party or I could put the Figaro twins. And Let's be real. The Figaro bros are the best. It is also mine. Okay, so Jador is literally the next thing. Why, indeed? And then he wakes. What are you doing here, friend? No, I'm good. Yes, because Vector is where the bridge scene happens! Okay, well, if we get to the bridge scene, if, which is unlikely but possible, I will bust out my sketchbooks then and show you like 20 year plus years of Lauren drawing the bridge scene. And then maybe we'll draw the bridge scene again for this playthrough. This game has two main characters. And that's one of its strengths, in my opinion. Um, Tara for the first half of the game, which is funny because she's actually not in your party for the whole thing, but it is her story. And then Sully's for the second half of the game because she's... Those are the two characters whose stories, um... 
Uh, like, those are the characters who grow and evolve and have, like, a direct personal arc that goes alongside the uh, events of the story in their respective sections. Because Tara's not the main character of the second half. She's found her answer. Sally's hasn't. The first half is... I do have to ask... If you don't think, if you're, if you're, if you dismissively say of that camp, what do you think the main character of this game is? And I will caution you, I will probably launch into a very long tirade about this game. But that's what we're here for. That's literally why I'm streaming it. So I have thoughts and feelings and opinions about this game going back several decades. I'm drinking water because I'm gonna probably be singing opera. Oh, that's right! I'm trying to let the rest of my cast develop healing magic, because it's useful for everybody to have at least Cure 1. Okay, Locke is my favorite character from any video game ever. But I cannot think of a single argument for why he would be a main like, the main character. And like, Locke is my boy. He's my absolute favorite. I love him more than any other character in any game ever made. <laughs> but he's not the hero. Locke has an arc just as Edgar has an arc. Um, and he does to some degree grow and change Sort of. Um, but it's not like centrally tied into the like. This isn't a game about forgiving yourself. And that's what Locke's story is about. This is a game about finding out who you are um, and finding what your personal strengths are and defining yourself. Um, I mean, you could say it's an ensemble cast in a way because it certainly is a is a. It is not a single character's like it's it's not a story that focuses exclusively on one character or two characters. Um, although I would say that what is it, De Deuteragonist? I think is what it's called when you have two protagonists. Um, Locke has significant ties to both of the main characters, and I would say he's definitely primary cast, not secondary or tertiary cast. I would say that primary cast is Tara, Sully's, Edgar, Locke, Sabin. Obviously, this is my bias because those are my favorite characters. Um, possibly Setzer. Um, secondary cast is Gao, Cyan, possibly Setzer. Um, Tertiary, uh, maybe Realman Strago if you're being generous. Otherwise, I would say tertiary cast is Realman Strago if you're not being generous. Um, Mog, Umaro, and Gogo. Um, yeah, I'm totally going to use the inn. <laughs> That's my plan. I just had to I had just had to stop. Oh yes, Umaro is definitely the central character. No, I mean 
You think Cesar is secondary, not 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 primary? I, I I'm inclined to agree, honestly. I'm inclined to say that the primary characters of the game are again um, Terra and Sully, so I think are the two main characters. Um, and then I would say that it would be, I guess, Locke, Edgar, Sabin in that order, because it is true. Locke is a very central character who has a lot of growth and has a stronger relationship. Um, with both of the, in my opinion, main characters of the story um, than the other two do. Edgar has more complexity, more significance to the story, and more of a character arc than Sabin, but Sabin is still important. Um, so I would say, like, in order of importance, that is them. You could even say that you feel that Sully's is more important than Terra because Sully's actively grows in both parts of the story. Um, but... I don't know, Tara seems like she's also kind of the, the listen to the song, Tara is kind of the mascot of the game. Um, and then I would say for secondary, um, I would go with Setzer. Probably Setzer, Cyan, and, um, and Gao in that order. Maybe not even Gao as a secondary character. It's just that, like, Setzer has a lot of story in the second half of the game because he's one of the non-optional characters. Another reason um, why, because I think the 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 you in order to beat the game, you have to have Sully's, Edgar, and Setzer. Those are the only three essential games or essential characters for the second half. Yes, no, this story is about Terra. Even even with her absence, the whole point is to get her back. Um, so, no, this is Tara's story, and it's, again, like, this is a, I feel like the two central characters here have, um, a quest for identity. Both Tara and Sully's, I, I've talked about this on stream before, we're we gonna talk about it again, but Tara and Sully's want to know who they are, and they're both coming at this from a place of not ever having really an opportunity to find out for themselves who they are, um, whether they've been directly controlled or indirectly controlled. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's the thing, Wesley Cake. Um, so where would you put, um, hmm, okay, hi, Win TV. you make a compelling argument, actually. Sully's Terra are, like, the, the deuteragonists, what's the word for that? Like, the dual protagonist? Um, there's a word for it. Anyway, they're the they're the main characters. Locke and Edgar are like absolutely super important supporting cast. Sabin and Setzer are both essential, emotionally connected characters. In Sabin's case, he's connected to one of the more important characters. In Setzer, he's just important to the story. Um, Mog, Gogo, and Amaro basically might as well not be in the game. As much as my favorite Fanon. Um, go-go thing is the go-go is Daryl. I find that very interesting and emotionally compelling. Unfortunately, it is not supported by the game. But that's why it's fanon and not canon. Because there's a canonical answer for who go-go is. Or mostly canonical. I don't know if it's officially confirmed, but there's a lot of hints that indicate it. Um, but I like the fanon theory of go-go is Daryl. And when I was in, like, sixth grade or whatever, um... Oh my god, so my first experiences with anything online, um, my dad's a professor so we ha and, and, and a huge nerd, so we had early dial-up, um, but before the internet was a thing, news groups, Usenet news groups were a thing, um, uh, and so my very first experience online was getting involved in a flame war between Final Fantasy and, uh, and Ultima fans. This is my very, very, very first experience on any sort of online thing. Isn't that amazing? I feel like that's so perfect. It's such, like, an iconic internet experience. And also, so funny that here I am over 20 years later, like 25 or however many years later, and my life is like defined in some ways by the experiences I've had because of video games. And here I am playing a Final Fantasy um, for you guys, for people in other parts of the world, which is really cool. Yeah, no, but it's funny. So after that, I found a news group that was a play by post 
um, a play-by-post RPG based in the Final Fantasy series. Um, so it was one of those things, if you've ever played like a fan like Mud Mush Mug or anything like that, you are intimately familiar with this idea. All of the Final Fantasies have been pulled together into one thing, kind of. But it's primarily Final Fantasy VI. It's just that there were there were some characters from other Final Fantasies, like there were like Cecil and stuff like that. And then there were original characters. So I wrote an original character named Alin. Um, and Alin was like blue and her like blood was blue and she'd been like experimented on because apparently even at age like 10, I was really dark and dramatic. <sighs> It's actually funny, my primary co-writer in that group, where our characters hung out all the time, um, went on to write for the GIA, the Gaming Intelligence Agency, I think it was called. Um, so he and I reconnected like when I was in high school online when he was writing for that site. I have no idea what he's up to now. That'd be really funny to be like, hey, are you in games? Because I'm tangentially related to games. Anyway. I got really involved with this community of people writing fanfic play by post, like play by chapter, play by email, where you would write what your character was up to, and you'd like talk to your the people who you were kind of like in your party, and you would kind of take turns writing, and you'd see what other people were up to. And actually, a number of those people I think went on to be involved in like the games journalism scene and things like that. So that's funny. Um, or o OCR. At least one person who was connected to that scene, I think, um, is an OCR person. Um, but they proposed, like they had. Um, Gogo was Daryl, and they wrote that, and the, so the person who played Daryl slash Gogo for, you know, middle school, high schoolers was a very compelling writer, and so my feelings about that have been shaped ever since then. Um, anyway, that's a tangent that is unrelated to anything else, maybe. Um, except that that's, like, been one of my favorite theories for a while. It's also interesting, Edgar turned into a lich? that game and there was huge drama about I don't remember this is going way back but anyway yes Mog was pretty heavily featured on the box art and manual and in the ads that were um, in in magazines because um, I guess we like cute moogles. Speaking of, I'm gonna be drawing some cute moogles to try to make a t-shirt for my band. So I might ask you guys to vote on which one you think. Because we already have a cute chocobo. Man, I talked for like 10 minutes. Good job, Lauren! This is why I was saying, even though technically Jador is the next place to go. God, I am tired because I was up until 2 a.m. I was streaming um, Step Mania. <laughs> and then I couldn't fall asleep until 4 because yesterday was a weird and bad day. Yesterday was the uh, one year anniversary of Knox passing. So I wasn't in the best of places emotionally. I haven't high wind. I've heard that I wouldn't like it from people who have a reasonable sense of these things. Well, the thing that's funny is I wasn't actually okay yesterday, but functionally speaking, I was fine. Just as when Ella died, my brain was like, yeah, what if we just didn't deal with any of this? Apparently, my brain, oops, that's not what I meant to do. Equip. Optimum. No, optimum. There we go. Oh, right. Okay, still only. Thank you. And then put him in the back row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, buddy. You ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna stick my boy in the back. That's where he goes. 
Uh, yeah, I did get around to streaming. It was late, Blue Glass. I didn't start streaming until almost 1 a.m. my time. So. What? Look, Locke is not strong, okay? I love him for many, many things. He is my favorite. But he is a little weakling. Uh, apparently, I just... Oh my god. Okay, that's adorable. Still in light. Uh, uh. Ain't no easy way to make the Imperial lands. What's she trying to say? Does she mean there's no easy way to get to Imperial lands? I think that's what she's trying to say, because I think we're supposed to be trying to figure out how we're going to get to Vector. <laughs> One of the idiots was those that will wander down. Of course, you realize you need an airship. Oh no! What's up? What's up, impresario? I have a lot of love for the Woolsey translation. I feel like I've talked a lot about the Woolsey translation um, as an interesting thing on this stream, but as I've as I've said a few times, I think um, it is an idiosyncratic translation, and I love that about it. Is it flawed? Yes. Is that all Ted Woolsey's fault? No. He was not working in ideal circumstances. Um, his particular method of working around those limitations is very distinctive. Um, and I'm really curious, did he ever, what else did he translate? Oh my god, I love this game. I just... I just really like it, okay, guys? Why are you posing like that, Salmon? No, he didn't actually do four. He wasn't actually responsible for Spoonie. I was really surprised by that. Okay. Ah! See, I feel like Chrono Trigger doesn't have a lot of Woolseyisms. Secret of Mana does. Secret of Mana has a few lines that are wacky or weird or you're just like why is that how you chose to translate that what does that mean where did that come from which is kind of i think a woolseyism thing um oh man did he translate mystic quest Did he, did he translate Mystic Quest? Oh my god. Did he translate Mystic Quest? That would actually explain so much. I mean, Locke is the means through which Terra and Sully's get introduced to the Returners, but that kind of disqualifies him from being the main character. Like, it isn't about Locke being part of the Returners, it's about these other characters becoming part of the Returners, and he's the, like, the side character who ushers them into the main plot. So... Oh my god, he also did Breath of Fire! Oh my god, that explains so much! Oh my god, I did not know he was- Oh my god, hold on. Hold on. I am literally about to text my sister, and I'm gonna ask her if she knew that Ted Woolsey- Hold on. Oh, this is really important. Did you know Ted Woolsey translated? Quest. Yes, I'm interrupting my stream to text my sister this. 
So my my sister and I actually named the main character in Secret of Mana Ted Woolsey because A, you could fit that many characters to have Ted space Woolsey. And also we wanted to make sure he was in the credit, but he did actually appear in the credits um, as T. Woolsey special thanks. <laughs> so we were satisfied. <sighs> My sister says, I assume he translated all the Super Nintendo Square stuff. Hold on. Sorry, guys. This is really important. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> she's insufficiently excited about this because like Ted Woolsey's translations are perplexing uh no uh okay <clears throat> so The main character isn't the person who sets off the action. Sometimes the, when we talk about main character, we're talking about the perspective character whose point of view we're looking from. For example, in The Great Gatsby, like Gatsby's the second, this the primary character, but what's his butt? The dot dude is the perspective character. And you'll have things where like, I am the other character looking at the actual like main character of the story. Um, Locke is not the perspective character, um, but the character who goes on the journey and who changes and grows um, drives the story um, both plot-wise and emotionally, that's the main character. Um, so, oh man, I don't... I don't know Super Mario RPG that well. I didn't particularly like it. Um, so it's not that it prevents him from being a main character. It's just that, like, he's not the main character any more than, like, Obi-Wan Kenobi is the main character of um, Star Wars uh, A New Hope just because he's the one who introduces Luke to the Force, if that makes sense. Um... Locke is the one who introduces Terra to the Returners in a way. He gets sent by the Returners to go rescue her um, and bring her back. So it's not even necessarily his, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He's the one who, yes, Ted Woolsey has a wacky sense of humor. So in places where the wacky sense of humor is supposed to be a thing, it's great. Um, wackiness doesn't always fit, though. Um, but he's very wacky. I appreciate that about him. Um, Wesley, we're talking about the main character of this game and why Locke doesn't really make sense as the main character. Um, because somebody, um, Gakijin is saying that um, they think that Locke makes sense as the main character because he's the one that introduces uh, Terra and Sully's both to the Returners. Um, Whereas I'm saying that doesn't make any more sense to me than saying Obi-Wan Kenobi is the main character of A New Hope because he's the one who introduces Luke to the Force and to the main stuff there. So a main character, like the protagonist, the hero of your story, is the central figure who drives the action and is driven by the action and whose emotional arc is most central to the story. Um... I love, oh my god, when we talk about pop culture references, we can talk about um, working designs. They were the worst about that. Um, but no, so, so Locke has a story arc in this game. He definitely does. His arc is about letting go of the past, accepting what is, and forgiving himself for mistakes. Um... Yes, um, so, so, so he, he plays an essential role, um, but it's not his story. This isn't Locke's story. We're not... I feel like Terra is the main character of the first half, still. Sully's is very definitely a central figure. 
but it is Tara's quest for self-discovery that we um, emotionally follow along on in the first half. And it is Tara's physical journey that we follow along plot-wise. Um, we escape with her, we rescue her, um, we escort her to a place. We see her reactions to the events. She's the one who has a personal connection to the espers and magicite. Um, she's the one who flies off and now the entirety of what we're doing is to go rescue her. Um, the, the emotional journey is, 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 I want to know what love is. Who am I? Um, like, like, who am I? Who can I be? Um, and, and, and where do I want to go from there? Like, these are Tara's internal questions. And so, so much of the conflict of this game, like, yes, we have an evil emperor trying to take over the world and we have to stop him and his crazy clown from murdering everyone. But, like, emotionally, like I've, like I've said repeatedly, Final Fantasy VI is a story about love and characters finding meaning in life through various forms of love and growing and developing. And so Tara has, I mean, I guess there's a certain degree of like having to learn to love. My sister keeps texting me about this. This is very exciting. Uh, <laughs> we're both really thrilled about Final Fantasy translations. Okay. We both love Ted Woolsey. Um, but um, where was I going with this? I got distracted by the fact that my phone is blowing up <laughs> with my sister's responses. I don't even know. What does she even have to say? Why is she texting me so much? <laughs> Never mind. My sister found out that Limited Run Games is making an Ask Me About Loom pin for Monkey Island. And she's like, I'm going to wear it every day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever wonder what my sister's like, she's that. Um, no, uh, so Final Fantasy VI doesn't tell Locke's story as, a, as the central driving thing. Like, I mean, A, we're not following around where Locke wants to go. We're not, um, we're not seeking answers to Locke's story. We're not pursuing what Locke wants to know or what Locke wants to do. He runs off in the world of Ruin to go take care of his unfinished business. But it's never his needs, his concerns, his fears, his worries, his ambitions, his hopes. None of those drive any of the events or emotional like direction of the story in either the first or the second half. He is a character who grows along the way, but he does not drive the story. Um, just like... <clears throat> I would disagree though, Ryan, because Tara's story reaches a conclusion um, of sorts um, going into, uh, into the second half. And she has a simpler, like she has a secondary conflict introduced in the second half, but it's much simpler to pursue and follow resolution for it. Um, whereas Celis is the one who has the most emotional growth in the second half. Because Celis is the one who has to follow from hopelessness to hope. It's Celis that we follow along with that emotional journey, not just the fact that she's the character that we have going through the plot. But that is what um, what the world of Ruin is. is. It's a journey from hopelessness to hope. And she's the one who leads us there. Um, yeah, I could see Locke being like Samwise level in Lord of the Rings. God, I love Samwise. He is definitely my favorite character from Lord of the Rings, at least the books. I don't remember from the movies, but... Her story is the song for the first half of the game. It stops being the overworld theme once you go to the world of ruin. Um, and the times that you hear her theme that aren't the overworld or the dramatic introduction are songs specifically related to the espers and things like that. Yeah, I'm not saying that Locke is not important to the game. He, he very definitely is, especially if Sellys is the second, um, this is the main character of the second half of the game, which I believe she is. Um, she's motivated to go on that journey to hopefulness because of Locke's bandana and remembering him like if this is a game about love 
Wander of Time is not the main theme. Um, it is the overworld theme for the first half of the game, if, if you're referring to the overworld theme from the first half of the game. Wanderer of Time is the name of the vocal arrangement from Final Fantasy Prey, which is one of my favorite songs on that album and one of my favorite arranged Final Fantasy songs of all time. Um, but... Um... Where was I? I was talking about characters. Oh, um, talking about Sully's and her motive. Oh yes, if, if love is the driving thematic element tying together all of the, um, all of the, like, elements of this story, which as I've said, Kefka will make fun of them for, um, and then they all talk about what love they find at the end which we'll get to that and we'll we'll talk about this again we're gonna just keep talking about this and maybe the more i discuss it because i'm talking about some of the same things over and over again but it's a little different every time maybe this is helping me refine my thesis <laughs> which my thesis is that final fantasy 6 is a game about love and the relationships between people in different forms and how that's how we draw our strength and our identity um that's my thesis and i'm sticking to it um but Celis's love is twofold. First of all, she learns to love herself, and she's not the only character. I think Tara also has to do that. Um, but Celis's love is romantic love. Um, and there is, like, the love of friends as well. Um, but her journey winds up being absolutely motivated by the connection she makes with Locke. That is at her pivotal moments. That's what it is. Like there's a reason why I've drawn the scene on the bridge so many times. And there's a reason why it's finding his bandana after she attempts to commit suicide. That is what motivates her to go off and seek her friends. And yes, she seeks for her friends. Yes. Um, so, so Tara's story is about loving others. Tara's story is about finding like the love that Tara finds is as as a as a as a mother figure, having others take care of, or having others to take care of. Here in this first half of the game, she is the one who's kind of being she's being like uh, protected. People keep kind of sort of protecting her and kind of sort of using her. Like even the Returners kind of try to do a little bit of both. Um, and you know here we are going to rescue her, but by the time we get to the world of ruin, Tara finds her purpose. Tara finds love. She wants to know what love is, and it's not romance. It's being, it's being mom. It's being a caretaker. Um. <laughs> God, I love the main theme. Um. Tara's journey is finding herself. Yes, I, I think that there is a degree of finding a way to love yourself that is several characters themes like I feel like both Tara and Sally which is what part of why their story is parallel and why it makes sense for the two of them to be both main characters is that they are telling two halves of one story and it is two young women with um a lack of sense of self and identity. In Tara's case, she never had the opportunity to develop one. In Celis's case, um, her identity gets taken away from her. When she chooses to leave the Empire, she doesn't have one in place of that. So both of them are on a journey to figure out, okay, now that I'm finally in control of my destiny, who am I going to be? Who am I and what am I going to become? Yeah, I know, Blue Glass. This is why I said there was not a sure thing we were going to get to the opera, okay? This is how I am, and I know it. Um, uh, yeah. So, so they are on these, these similar journeys of self-discovery. And in Tara's case, she wants to know who she is more than needing to learn to love herself because she doesn't have... Sully's hates herself in some ways. Sully's doesn't care what happens to herself. I've talked about this last time. Um, Sully's has honestly kind of a lack of, of self-preservation in a way because she's decided that she doesn't matter as much as making sure the right thing happens matters. So she doesn't, she doesn't 
until Locke thinks she's she betrays the party um, and she started making some connections. Like when she first meets the Returners, she's like, basically, I don't care if you guys like me. I don't care if you guys trust me. I'm not going to defend myself. That doesn't matter. What matters is that the, the Empire is trying to kill people and we need to save them. Which is part of why I love her so very much. Um, but so they're not coming at it from the same place. And I don't think that Tara needs to learn to love herself. I think Tara needs to learn herself, and she does. She she finds, she because she's been given pieces, and she's been given orders, and she, like, gets all of the stuff, and then finds out, oh, also, by the way, you're half not human. Um, and she's kind of got to reconcile that and come to terms with it, which she's working on right now. Um, but kind of as she does, and she takes all of these pieces, she, she comes up with the, the sense of who she is. She comes up with an answer to that question, and she answers that question in the second half of the game. Whereas I guess in a way, Sully's kind of... <sighs> Sully's does have to, I think, learn to love herself more than Tara does. Because she's like, I have committed evil acts, and all I can do is try to make things better now. And I'm just going to keep doing that. And now the world is broken, and there's no point. Um, I don't know. I love Sully's. As I've said before, I am a diehard Locke and Sully's fangirl. I am not... I'm usually a person who... I, I don't consider myself like a shipper person. Um, but they're my OTP, and they have been since this game came out. So... A lot of what we do in, in, in this playthrough, because normally I play through games blind, for those of you who haven't seen me stream before, normally I play through games blind and I speculate on the story and I kind of deconstruct like the narrative um, decisions that are happening um, and kind of go into character development and things as I see it um, and also cry a lot. Um, but this is my favorite game of all time. I started playing through it on my birthday on stream, just kind of as a fun thing. We've kept it up. But this is the one where, like, I just talk. I think it took us two and a half hours to get through the first half hour of the game on the first stream because I have a lot to say. Um, uh, the most moving redemption arc. Okay, so redemption arcs and, and are, are a specific kind of arc. Um, I have to think about who even qualifies this is my favorite game from the Super Nintendo era, and I, I feel that Sully's has a redemption, if that's what you're talking about, if that's what's prompted that question. Um, anyway, this is not a blind stream, as you can tell. That person. Why is he master now? Kane, thank you for both following and hosting. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> I hope you enjoy my uh, my long-windedness. It is the best. It's my absolute favorite. Except if I'm in the middle of playing nine. If I'm in the middle of playing nine, then I will tell you nine is my favorite. Otherwise, it's six. So why do you think that Frog's story is a redemption story? What is Frog having to redeem himself from? Usually a redemption story is the story of somebody who committed some sort of terrible act and that, that has designated them as a bad person and having to prove that there is good in them after all. So, um, for example, whether you like it or not, um, in the most recent Star Wars, which I will not go into too much detail about what actually happens in the movie, but one of the things that people were kind of obsessed with was, was is Kylo Ren going to get a redemption arc? That's a redemption arc. A, redemption's, a, redem a redemption arc is taking a dark character and redeeming them to the good, in a way. Um, so you'll have like anti-heroes or villains, usually are the ones that get redemption arcs. Uh, Glenn is a noble, good person through and through who made a mistake and is trying to figure out how to make it up. Uh, or make up for it, which is kind of what Locke is doing. But Locke's story isn't a isn't a redemption arc. Celis's uh, could be. She sacked um, Miranda and was a general in the evil army taking over the world and probably killed a bunch of innocent people. Yes, Locke and Celis. That's my favorite. 
and in a tizzy. Like, that's just such a strange way to translate that. He's been in a tizzy. I mean, it's a normal slang, but it's not what I would go to as my first choice. And maybe some of that is because, again, Ted Wilsey was limited very significantly in the amount of space he had. But also, it's weird. Um... The Wandering Gambler. Who could it be? No, you haven't missed the opera. We're still in store. Oh my god, is that Rydia? one by heart. That's okay. It's the um, other version of his theme that is easier to play on flute by ear. Such a good song, though. Oh my god. The uh, the girl I apparently had a crush on growing up had a, had a thing for um, silver-haired, scarred, tragic dudes. So she liked Setzer, she liked Alucard, there were a few others back in the day that she was really into and I would draw her pictures of them, uh, shirtless. <laughs> so, uh... I don't actually, I don't ship Tara with anyone and I don't think she needs to. I think that her, part of her point is she finds love in other ways. She doesn't need romance. She doesn't seem comfortable with romance. Um, she says she wants to know what love is and she finds out and it's not romantically falling in love with someone. So I actually like the interpretation of her as being like an ace a romantic character. I think that that's true to what's in the text and also just kind of nice to have. Doesn't he blue glass? At least he appeals to, he's the same visual archetype. So he appeals to the same kind of fangirl. Those triplets. Oh no, Locke! Oh no, Locke! How are you gonna do that, Locke? How are we gonna do this? I can't imagine! No, the art was not done by the same person. Amano did the art for the Final Fantasy games, and I can't remember what the- what's the name of the woman who draws the Castlevania art? It's actually very, very different. I think her art style is more akin to the artist of um, Metal Gear Solid, which would make sense. Those are both Konami games, although it's not the same artist, I think. All right, let us save. Oh, is it another Kojima? They're not related though, right? I feel like if the Kojimas were related, we would know. That seems like something that the gaming world would know and be excited about. Alright. Yes, that's right. You are just in time for the opera. 
Yes, well, it's funny because in like the NES versions, I think I think it's Final Fantasy One. You can't necessarily hear the little da 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 da. Like it's so like it's mixed so low. I don't even know if mixed is the right word for that, but um, that's what I know. What was I? What was I doing? Oh, right. I'm trying to give everybody cure. No wrong buttons. Ugh. Who has? Yeah, well, I'm thinking about at least making sure that somebody else has, um, cure. Somebody who will be in my party. <laughs> Maybe useful. Uh, why not, Lock? Just steal. Steal from everybody. Okay, apparently- or, or don't! Just don't! That's fine, too! No! Be confused! He just spins around with his hands over his head. Please don't do it on my party. So you can do it on my party. Yep. Uh, okay. Well, that's good to know that that can happen. Operas super well. Okay, so clearly we're gonna fight the guy on the bottom. You. We're gonna fight you. You're gonna die. Because you're bad news. Oh my god, you guys actually have health. Stop having health. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, you can go ahead. Blind my party. See if I care. We're good, we're fine, we're fine. Everything's fine. Grind a teeny bit. I will attempt. I will attempt not to get myself killed. Oh yes, that's right. We're talking about Sabin punching people until their heads explode. Right? Isn't that the fist of the North Star away? Oh man, Sabin, you got a fire magics. Are you gonna do Sabin? Are you gonna fire magics? Fire magics. Are you gonna do it? Are you gonna do it? Try to give more of my party members here one. Although I know what is it? Um, there's another one that lets you get the cures much faster. But I want to have some cures. Do I want to use the drill? I bet I want to use the drill. I want to use the drill. Ha! I stole that guy's tonic. Ha! Take that, buddy. Take that, buddy. <clears throat> now we're gonna take that, buddy. See, this feels like this would be an ideal time for me to talk about more things. Yes! Edgar got cure! That means it's someone else's turn to get cure, because you just want everybody to have cure, you know? I know 
I can just do it for the same. I should probably get some more Phoenix Downs. Where is my Phoenix Down shop? Where is it? You're not a Phoenix Down shop. Oh, here you are. Aladdin's lamp. Okay, so drill is single use. Okay. I guess I could go to the end. I don't think I need to go to the end. I'm gonna be fine. I'm gonna be fine. I'm fine. All right, we're good. We're good. Everything is good. It's all fine. It's all fine. How are you? I don't know. I don't know, friends. Look at how much better I am at fire dance than like literally anything else. Um, no, there's another one that's good. Bum rush. <laughs> Did you have a bad- were you in a bad place, Gakujin? Usually when people say kill the mood, that means that, that they're in a worse place, but hopefully you're not. No, we're fine, Blues! We're fine! Do you see how much fine we are? So much fine. So much fine. He doesn't even have anything. Bum, bum. Yes, Mithril Knight. My life is complete for having found that. a spinach rag. <clears throat> I will not be playing this by ear on my flute. I forgot this is Lox's idea, isn't it? has its uses. Oh no! Like, why is this the way that he chose to translate it? I don't know! You're gonna have to make a decision, friend. He's like, no. That's right. It is totally Locke's brilliant idea. But he looks at her, and she's just like, um, what? from the Magitech Research Facility in Vector. An opera house. We're gonna impersonate an opera singer so we can get the attention of the guy with the airship. How on earth did 
did they come up with this? I think. Because, I, like I said, I found the argument that Final Fantasy VI is an opera extremely, extremely compelling. Um, and so they're kind of like, hey, what if we made an opera house? Wouldn't it be cool if we had our characters have to do an opera? All right. Uh, scenario writers, how are you going to fit that into the story? And they're like, uh, well... You have to do an opera for a reason. We'll do this, I guess. And I guess there could be some elements, maybe a fan of the opera in it. Um, but it's just like, I don't know. It's so random. It's so random. And like the case of mistaken identities, the lookalikes, all of that, that's very like, that's very opera feeling. That's very like theater, like old fashioned story and stuff. I don't know. Like the elements of it are drawn from things, but its presence in the game plot, it doesn't make a lot of sense. It's very random. It's very strange. And I love it dearly. Um, I love it very, very much. Uh, but in working to adapt this to a serious, short, shorter version where everything in it made sense, we had to cut out the opera house because it makes no sense. All right, so I am going to take a brief pause here. I will be back in a minute so you can enjoy the music.
hold on. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There we go. I'm back. Sorry about that, folks. <sighs> oh, right. I should actually be on the game. And then the game will respond to my inputs. Celis so is like, I didn't agree to this. And Locke's like, no, it's good. It's fine. We got this. <laughs> So this, everyone's like, yeah, and she's like, what the heck? I love her, like, series of weird animations there. <sighs> I actually, back when I was making my silly little albums um, that I was I was putting on Bandcamp, one of them is called Not Small for Floozy. <laughs> it's one that has the aria on it. I have no idea whether the key that this is in is too high for me or too low. I just know that it's not the same key that I sing it in with my band. Probably shouldn't be hacking and coughing. She doesn't actually sing Maria. That's what Draco sings. Yes, not some opera floozy. If you go look up laurenthefluteandbandcamp.com, you'll hear it. I am going to put some more music out. You'll notice those haven't been updated in years. Ultros, why even? Why even, Ultros? Why? Like, why is there an evil sentient octopus? Like, why is he in the game? I mean, I love him. Don't get me wrong. I love Ultros very much. But also, what? You know? I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. Right, blue glass, trying to sing while also picking an answer. That's fine. We'll be fine. My sister and I did actually fail the opera a couple of times when we first started. I think we, I think we didn't know you could look at the lyrics. Sorry. He got run over by some chocobos. Were they real chocobos on stage? There's totally um, a part in um, in the aria where there's ba -da -da, ba -da -da, which is the the O oh Maria part. Um, or the Maria Maria, I love you so, Maria, which um, is French horn, I believe, in the original, but I made sure that our guitarist played it. In fact, I redid our entire band arrangement of this song so that that part would be on guitar, which means that the keyboard has to play um, the little uh, um, arpeggio thing at the beginning, which is supposed to be harp. We were gonna do clean guitar, and I was like, no, the uh, the Maria Maria part has to be electric guitar. No, there's an argument to be made that this game is an opera. Going to the dressing room. one of my favorite lines in the entire game. I love you, Sabin, Sabin, 
is what we call these days a himbo. I love him! Uh, why is everyone singing? I don't know, Stefan! Why is everyone singing? It's a mystery! I can't imagine! shouldn't be hard, but I'm getting self-conscious about it because I clearly don't know how to play this. Oh my god. Off limits! Please turn around. Such good lines. Just, uh, why is everyone singing? It's just so good. I'm sorry. It's really great. My favorite musical? Oh, Les Miserables. I like melodrama and tragedy. What can I say? I don't remember if there's anything else you can see and do. Okay. Lock doesn't have my running shoes. Sprint shoes? Sprint shoes. Can't go through. The music has started. Performance underway. Hmm. Okay. I'll do what's there. <sighs> I could do this. Oh man. The ribbon suits you. He like takes a look at her and he's like, oh no, she's hot. <laughs> it's a great moment. She's like, it's gorgeous. The Baroque dress that she wears. Um, I actually wanted to try to make a version of that for um, Halloween this year, but it was too much effort and making a little Tara costume was easier. It's an important question here. By the way, there's tension between these two characters. Did you notice? Because I sure did. <sighs> Yeah, so this is like, ah, uh, it has nothing to do with me. And so, and Locke is still red faced. <laughs> He's just like, I don't know what to, to, to do. I don't, I don't know how to handle these feelings. Sure. These are the lyrics that I know. These are the terrible lyrics that my band does. It's so much harder to sing these. Graze the flowers to the star. Yes. And then it's a mystery what happens beyond that. I love her design. She's so pretty. Ah. Oh, is it a tad more subtle in the Game Boy Advance version? What are, what are the lines? Like, what is the dialogue in the Game Boy Advance version? Also, it's funny, I've seen now the um, the design for her outfit, but back in the day I hadn't seen it, so I didn't realize that she had this blue stomacher, or the stomacher with like blue lacing over it. But now that I look at the sprite, knowing that's what it's supposed to look like, I can see that. Anyway, I love her, and I've drawn illustrations of this for a million years. Oh man. The biggest stage I've ever performed on was either PAX South or PAX West. When we had like somewhere between 700 and 1100 people out there, not counting anyone who was watching the stream. 
when we first went to PAX South for our very first PAX South to, to perform, um, the night before we played, um, after like the music was done, somebody pulled me um, and was like, hey, um, you should probably take a look at what that stage is going to be like before you go out there, which is a good idea because I don't get stage fright. Um, I have a lot of anxiety about letting people down, but I don't get stage fright. Um, but you make an exception for the size and scale of that theater and having my face plastered on three gigantic screens. It's interesting, especially because I'm the, I'm the, I'm the band leader and the front person, so whenever I talk, it's on me. Whenever I sing, it's on me. No pressure. Hmm. Ah, asking if she's just a replacement. That's right, just a substitute. Like, you're just a replacement for her. Yeah. Locke is having conflict. Well, because the, the complicated thing there is, like, Sully's wants to know, like, do you like me for me? Kind of. Because she is not accustomed to... Hi, I'm Lauren. I know we're about to do one of my favorite things in the entire game. But why would I do that when I can analyze Locke and Sully's relationship? <laughs> So, um, Celis hasn't ever had a romantic relationship. Like, that's kind of apparent at this point. She's probably not really had friends either. Um, it is apparent that there is something between Celis and Locke. And if you missed it prior to this scene, this scene makes it abundantly clear that something is happening. She wants to know what he's thinking and what he's, what he's feeling. And honestly, he's still trying to figure that out, too. Um, you know, they're both trying to establish, does he have any interest in her, in her at all? Or was it just that she was a woman who needed saving and made him think of Rachel? Um, and in a way, she's kind of hurt and offended by that. And, but she's also kind of like, come clean with me, dude. Like, what is it? And he is not in a good place to answer that. Um, he is like, he, he clearly feels deeply uncomfortable with the fact that he is obviously very attracted to her, distractingly so. Um, and they've had enough kind of significant moments leading up to this point that it's not just like, oh, you're gorgeous. There's, there's an interest between the two of them. They kind of get to know each other and there's kind of this mutual respect and some of that is having to read between the lines because it is a Super Nintendo era RPG. So things, there's not quite as much dialogue as we might get in a modern game. Um, but it's clearly intended to be there. It's clearly intended to be happening. Um, and there's a lot of question people have about Sully's herself throughout. Like, is she going to betray us? Can she be trusted? Is she a good person or a bad person? She doesn't really defend herself. Um, and Locke kind of does defend her. Um, and she's clearly like got issues when you have, when you go down to see Rachel in her, um, creepy flower basement. <laughs> I can't defend that one. I love Locke. Can't defend that one. Um, Sully's goes back down to look at Rachel and that kind of introduces the complication. So Sully's is kind of like, oh, I kind of thought that maybe you were interested in me and I don't know how I feel about that, but maybe you're not. And I also don't know how I feel about that. So it's two people who don't know how to deal with their feelings, but they're complicated. Like, does Sully's want Locke to say, I saved you because I like to help people and I'm glad I did because I care about you? Um, I, how old is he? I thought he was 25 and she was 18. So I thought it was seven years. Um which I still feel is actually a bit much because she comes across as older than 18. But even so, I think it's, I think he's 25 and I think she's um, 18. So I think it's a seven year age gap. Um, yeah, that, I think that's a, I think that's a really good point. Um, because for the Super Nintendo era, this was kind of subtle. Uh, no, her, her official canonical age is that she's 18, um, and his official canonical age, if he's not 25, like, please inform me, because these are things that I would like to think I know. 
No, I don't think he's 31. I think he's 25. Um. I didn't need my mouse. Yeah! What am I doing? Why am I unplugging? Oh no, hold on. <sighs> anyway. So, this is the best Dojinshi ever made for Final Fantasy VI. I don't have all of it. I wish I did. It goes through the exact sequence of the story. Um, it has the character pages. This is, by the way, how I know, as of this time, what the most popular pairings were. Okay, does this have... Locke Cole, age 25, height 175 centimeters, um, birthday, November 24th. Sagittarius, blood O type. I thought so. I'm also. So we got the same blood type. Hobby, nap on field. Favorite, map, detest mushroom. Anyway, how old is Cyan? I think Cyan's actually a grown up. How old is Cyan? Tara is 18. Uh, Edgar's 27. So obviously, so is Sabin. Shadow is estimated 35 to 40. Locke is my favorite. Yeah, no, I will defend my boy's honor. Like, don't underestimate how much I love these characters. Anyway, I will stop fussing with these, but they're absolutely gorgeous. Like, um... This is volume one. Here we have Locke rescuing Terra. Um, volume five, you'll never guess what happens in this one. You'll absolutely guess what happens in this one. Um, I actually don't know whether any of them go so far as to have serious Locke and Sully stuff, but there is of course Locke rescuing Sully's. Um, Anyway, I don't remember what I was talking about because I got distracted because we were trying to determine whether my man Locke is too old for Sully's, which is up to debate. Um, anyway, for the Super Nintendo, I think if it had been uh, subtler in its translation, honestly, I think it would have been lost because a lot of us were small children when we played this game. And I was able to pick up on some of the complicated feelings because they were slamming me over the face. Like, they were like, like whapping me with the two by four of this is what's happening. And I needed that in order to have any understanding of it. Um, once you kind of have a slightly older and, and more sophisticated audience, you can assume that they'll be able to understand a more sophisticated translation. So it makes sense to have it be a little subtler. Either way, I love the fact that neither one of them knows what they want. Like if Locke had been like, I really feel, I have feelings about you right then. Sully's would have been like, ah! And if Sully's had been like, Locke, I have feelings for you right now, he would be like, oh no! Um, but also if Locke had been like, I have absolutely no interest in you, Sully's would have been like, I'm not happy about that. And if Sully's had told Locke, I'm not interested in you, he would have been like, what is this feeling? Like they're both just like, they don't know what they want. And that's so great and so interesting. And I love them. And anyway, are you guys ready? Are you ready for this? I don't know if I'm ready for this. I love this game. The first time I sang this song in public, I started crying. <sighs> did I, did I hit the wrong button? <sighs> okay. Find out how this is for my range.
to me once more. It's way too deep for me. She is a mezzo. I'll play you guys. Do you want to hear the in progress of my album? Of my band? After this? You hear that? That's the Maria Maria part that I was talking about on French horn, which by the way is also Locke's instrument. Oh, I've got feelings! This scene! I have illustrated this scene oh, so many times. Let's part now. of the original performance it makes sense for that ending right there to be um, to kind of fade away and be sad and hopeless that's not the ending we do we drew inspiration from another arrangement of it so we go way up at the ending we make it very dramatic Yes, it's, you know, when I realized what that was referencing. See, and he's just, like, standing there staring at her, like, Locke. Honey. <sighs> All right. We're gonna, um... Oh, I dropped my mouse on the floor. Right. And then all of my cords are tangled in each other. What did I do? I'm a mess. <clears throat> Would you guys like to hear? Would you like to hear the returners performing this? Um, not fully mixed or anything like that. Not final versions, but, um, would you like to hear it? Hopefully Russ won't get mad at me. Okay, I love this so much. So we're gonna search, hang on. Give me a second. Turn this recording. Uh, 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 um. Search and conversation. Right, well, he, he, it just, there's just, Locke is definitely interested in her, okay? That's, that's just, that's just it. All right. Let's listen to this. Unmixed. Where is it? This is as of last November. Can you hear that?
Here, let's 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 do that again. I, I saw what happened. How's that? Better? We kind of want a little bit '90s ballad. transition to make live, but I do it. I think that's the grand finale version. I'm trying to remember because I know the grand finale version, which is my favorite. So yes, we went a little all out there, which is so much fun to sing because part of the thing is we do Phantom of the Opera, but we need to have a phantom. So somebody has to be around to do phantom. But if we do this, all we need is me. And like phantom has this great ending bringing down the house. And so we can do... very dramatic but as you can hear that is um a little bit higher than the original because <laughs> i am a soprano unlike maria and sully's apparently and what you're talking about is from balance and ruin the overclocked remix um album of final fantasy 6 music um if i'm not mistaken might be mistaken but i'm pretty sure Vert, also known as Jake Kaufman, was on that album, part of that pro project. Anyway, thank you guys for um, uh, humoring me on my musical adventures there. Um, 
yeah, so the new Returners album will be coming out this year. I still have to draw the cover art for it. Um, and we have to finish. Almost everybody's recorded. Um, anyway, yes, because when you lead a band called the Returners, you kind of have to do the opera. But we've decided that every album we do is going to have something from Final Fantasy VI on it. So the first one has a Final Fantasy VI medley. The second one has the aria. And really, where can you go from there? Thank you, Humming Hermano. Um, I've recorded all of my parts. Oh my god, it's, you know, that's amazing. I've recorded all the flute and vocal parts. Um, so it's just a matter of, I think, the bass and a couple of guitar parts, maybe. But it's almost done, and then our friend Russ is going to finish mixing it, and then I don't know what we're doing for mastering. I forgot. I don't know if we answered that question. I don't know how these things work well enough. I'm going to jam up your, like, I'm going to jam up your opera. What? Why is that the phrase you used, Mr. Woolsey? I don't know. It's a mystery. That's right, Blue Glass. There's only one song in Final Fantasy VI that you can do to be better than having done the aria. And it is, in fact, all four slash five movements of Dancing Mad. We've learned the last section. Now we're learning number one and sort of number two. And then Wedge, our keyboardist, is figuring out exactly what to do with movement three because she doesn't want um she doesn't want to play that entire organ solo herself okay so mixing metaphor soup you say that i actually want to um do an arrangement of that for my youtube channel and maybe make a little thing but so i've actually written out um because fun fact about uh Five years ago, I think, maybe even longer, I decided I wanted to do that. So I started reaching out to friends on YouTube, that I, or people I didn't know very well on YouTube. Anyway, this, it's flipped so you can't tell, but this is notes about the Final Fantasy VI ending theme and people who might be able to play it, parts of it with me. Yeah, well, Blade Tiger, it's, I think it's one of those more iconic lines. I love the ending theme. The problem is the ending theme is... 18 minutes, I believe, and uh, Dancing Mad is slightly shorter and also a bit more iconic. Anyway, that'll happen eventually, but first I want to finish these flute choir covers, which is originally supposed to be just like an easy little thing I was going to throw together, but I have a problem with scope creep and projects. <sighs> so, anyway, Salmon is still confused. Oh no! The song. Bam 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 bam. Bam 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 bam. So dramatic. but in my head for a billion years. <sighs> I've never been able to figure out Prince Ross's thing. But how might he disrupt the opera? Oh my god, it's gonna take me five minutes! Also, while we're on the subject of why... Okay, so I have this idea, folks. 
We have this kind of steampunk fantasy adventure game with like, um, there's like an evil empire and our heroes have to overcome the emperor and the empire. Um, and they've got this friend they need to rescue who discovers that she's kind of half a magical creature. And so she goes flying off and they need to rescue her. Um, so in order to get a vehicle to go rescue her, they have to impersonate an opera singer. So they go to an opera house and then a giant purple talking octopus decides that he's going to drop a weight on her head. Obviously. I mean, I don't know about you, but that's definitely the plot direction. <laughs> <sighs> I love this game. I love it so much. You can probably tell how much I love this entire section. <laughs> anyway. Gwa! Yeah! Isn't that, um, Naga? Isn't that what, um, Undyne's theme? We haven't a second to lose. It's as good as done. All right, I'm bad at video games with time segments, so please bear with me if I get the entire party dead. Is there a reason why I would push any other switches? I don't remember. And you know, it actually makes sense to have weights up there. It just doesn't make sense. Ah, thank you, Stolen Light. It's just kind of a weird thing. Um. Oh my god, I have strong associations with fire dance with this song playing. Because fire dance is really just what you do all the time. What? Lauren! Why did you do this? This should this should take care of him. Yes, mixing metaphor soup. Yes, we had we had a moment with that. It's so great. It makes me so happy. Ah! Okay, well hopefully we'll make through this. Make it through this. Oh, I've got plenty of time. Is there a treasure chest or anything? I don't think so. <laughs> what? Hold up. This is not cool. When did this happen? Why are there suddenly limitless rats? What did I do wrong? Was I not supposed to come this way? Oh my god, Lauren. <laughs> I don't think there's any treasure chests that are really worth getting here, so we're just gonna get this these rats. Ba-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-
Now I know, and I will do better. I will go after the gold rat from now on. <laughs> bye bye? No. Now bye bye. Phew! Rats, I probably should have healed. Like, it's funny that he says rats. Oh my god. I love this part. And everyone's just like, what do we do? Um. Oh no. Maybe she rescues herself. Nah, that's ridiculous. Locke is like winning the girl. I got this. I, Locke, <laughs> the world's premier adventure will save her. He's like, oh my God. Like, it's just, Ultras' lines are really good. And Kafka's lines are really good. And they wouldn't be nearly as good without the translation that they have. You're in the presence of octopus royalty! A lowborn thug like you could never defeat me. He's like, okay, fine. <laughs> Will, you missed it! If I can do it. Okay, fine, we're just gonna fire dance him. Wait, what am I doing? Locke, don't you have lightning? Oh no. Oh no, come on, Ultras! <sighs> anyway, this isn't a difficult game. With the exception of the floating continent. And like, a couple of other places. Just a darn minute! Are you ready? Thought still in light. Thinking she's Locke's new queen. Oh, yes, thinking she's Locke's new queen. Absolutely. I totally read a book that had a scene that references that, except also some sky pirates showed up too and got into a fight with alien sensor. It was a thing. That's true. Oof, my eye is itchy. Setzer, that's not very romantic. I'll deal with you in a minute. She's like, nah, I got this. I remember being so excited about this as a kid. Like, so excited. I was like, oh my god, oh my god, we're on the airship. Oh, my party jumped on the airship. This is incredible. 
It's amazing. Locke is like, I'm still in the acting stage. I'm acting. I'm a hero. I'm an actor. He's like, oh, yikes. This isn't what I counted on. Wait, what do you mean, Homie Hermano? Um, when they, when they grab Garnet at the beginning? You know, mixing metaphor soup, they could just have a battle between Rolfs and, um, Draco for the safety of the kingdom or something like that. <laughs> Sets are just like, oh my god. I had this, like, wonderful romantic story planned out in my head. Yeah, well, one of the things about Final Fantasy IX... Sorry, my eye is really bugging me all of a sudden. One of the things about Final Fantasy IX is that it is the game for people who liked the Super Nintendo Final Fantasies and were displeased with the direction. Oh, man, you can tell I'm wearing mascara. It's, like, smudging. Um, it was specifically for people who liked the Super Nintendo era one, so it had a lot of direct references um, to them. For people who played seven and eight and were like, this isn't what I want. Yeah, they could have the real... The thing is, though, they could just have the real Maria come out and finish the show and just, like, ignore any of this weird stuff. Now, no spoilers about Final Fantasy XIV because I'm playing my way through it and I'm not very far. I'm about to get to Heaven's Word, maybe, after two years because I'm good at playing video games. It's flattering you. You're so amazing. Savin's like, I got nothing. I got nothing. Like, he's like, literally got nothing to say. She's like, yeah. <sighs> Why is Edgar in the front? I love this. I love that Sully's is the only character in the front row. That feels very fitting for Sully's to me. Such love and care put into the sprites and the design and everything. It's really nice. Not quite as detailed as they were able to get with, um... God, I love the blackjack theme. It's so good. It's my airship already, right? I didn't realize you could just go running around through the air. Oh man, this is great. Oh my god! Go, customers! Sure. Huh. It's my airship now. What are you gonna do about it, Setzer? Say no. I mean, I guess you could kick me off your airship. Yeah, free heels are my favorite. You guys should consider yourselves lucky you missed me playing Final or er, uh, playing Fantasy Star One. It was a free heal at the beginning of the game, and I would teleport back there to get healed. Uh, all the way through the entire game. It was a problem. I have a problem. That's true, Setzer's not really the strong type who's gonna, like, fight us. Maybe he's got some goons. You don't know. His goons might be able to fight us. Uh, red mages. The answer's always a red mage. Bum, bum, not actually all of this the translation is not quite right as I understand it from this section I'm trying to remember smash by the Empire also totally rotten <sighs> I've actually never played 12. One of these days I will. It's totally rotten. That's what I thought, Stolen Light. 
the complete opposite of what he says in this translation. But, you know. Eh. Yeah, I remember there being um, some interesting comments about that by um, uh, Tomato, the, the uh, translator who tr fan translated Mother 3, among other things. Oh, mixing metaphor soup. I never actually managed to get stuck in Fantasy Star 1. I did wind up in a dungeon that I couldn't figure out how to get out of. By the time I crawled to the surface, I was so overleveled. Not that it really matters in that game. I hate the Empire for the same reasons. He's like, okay, you're really hot. So he's just like, why do men keep saying that when I'm trying to be like a serious adult? Having serious conversations. And now Locke is like, hold up. You can't actually have this girl. I mean... It's not like she's my girl or anything like that, but you can't have her. And so this is like, nah, this is cool. She's like, hey, Edgar, how does she know Edgar has this? I don't know, but she does. Maybe they had a conversation. What happens if you don't have Edgar for this scene? Because I've literally never not had Edgar during this scene. Because you would miss a lot if you didn't have the Figaro Bros here. Because it's not just... Oh, okay. Because the best part of it... Okay. Ah, okay. Thank you, Blade Tiger. The best part of this scene is Sabin's reaction. Brother, that coin? <laughs> I love this. What would happen if you didn't get the scene? Like, isn't that horrifying? Like, why? I mean, A, why would you not have the Figaro Brothers in this scene? But also, you would be missing out on this. This is great, and it's important, and it's referenced, and their item, and the ending theme is the two headed coin, which has them, one of them, on each side. It's wonderful. It's the best. I love it. I love it. Sabin doesn't know. And it's but she's such a great, such a great moment. It's such a good Edgar development moment. I love Edgar the amazing king and the responsible older brother. I just love Edgar. He's not my favorite character, obviously. But I love him. And like the because if you're like, because if you haven't played this, if you haven't seen this scene, because for some reason you didn't bring the Figaro brothers here. Then why, then you wouldn't know why, the, why their song is called Coin Song, which is, by the way, what the sad version of their theme, it's called Coin Song, for this reason. But you wouldn't know that, and that would be tragic! <sighs> oh yeah, no, like, sets her, which is like, I think even hustled, he's like, this is amazing! Like, when he's like, how low can you get? I love it! Oh my god, I'm just like having these like nostalgia feelings of like the era of my life when my sister and I played this game. Like this is this is this is some good writing. Like this is a good line. Nothing to lose but my life. My life's a was the chip in your pile, Auntie up. So good. Oh no, Blade Tiger. Oh no. I can't even imagine. Yeah, no, that's definitely a true mixing metaphor, Soup. Like, Setzer at this point is kind of going around aimlessly. Like, Setzer doesn't have motivation or 
drive besides just kind of having fun. And so he's like, well, this is more interesting than just kind of having money and doing what's fun. Because being a... So you know that Locke doesn't actually... Locke doesn't get motion sickness in the air. Although I feel like... I feel like it would be different. Um, and I feel like motion sickness would be less bad in an open air um, flying thing as opposed to um, in an airplane. Because a lot of motion sickness is the disconnect between your brain being like, I feel like I'm in motion, but I also think I'm not in motion. So if you have like fan blowing on your face, your brain's like, ah, yes, movement. Okay, everything's as it should be. Um, whereas there's something about being on a boat where just like everything is just a little bit weird. Um, but Locke doesn't get sick on here, but he totally gets sick on, on, on ships, which I would too. Um, could it crash? And he has a, yeah, he has a moment, you see? Setzer has a moment there where he looks down and then he goes kind of zenish about it. Setzer's like, I did not agree to go fight with you. Oh man, this was so mind blowing back in the day graphically. Like, just like watch this. Like, it's so atmospheric with like the music, which is so ominous. And like the coloring, the lighting, those like the searchlights, and then slowly Vector rises on the horizon as you get this like really uncomfortable, ominous military sound. Like, can you imagine if you if you weren't a kid playing this back in the day, try to imagine how this moment would blow your mind. We don't get a ton of mode 7 in this game. I forgot how much the airship actually looks like an Uematsu, not Uematsu, and a mono design for an airship in this game, which it doesn't in um, the Final Fantasy IV's airships are funny. Is this mode 7? I thought this was just walking around. Because I think of mode 7 as being like Mach 3D, which I didn't think that this was Mach 3D. I thought this was just walking around in two dimensions. It's just drawn at a slight angle. Oh, it is? Okay, well, I didn't know that. It's not mode 7 in the way I think of mode 7. It doesn't have three dimensionality to it. But that's interesting. I guess that could explain why moving around is kind of a bit of a Blur isn't right, the right word, but there's a slight delay on it. Um, the way, like, there's no delay when you walk around the overworld in four. Strings up, anyone who opposes it. Mm. dimensionality of it when you fly when Terra is flying around screaming and when you're flying around in an airship and so on but I didn't realize it was the same for walking around forged sure what else am I going to do with my money these are for throwing things as him if I remember correctly. Scholar of Weapons. Ah, uh, the Atma Weapons, which is actually Ultima Weapon? Did you know that? Yeah, I don't think I've ever used a Warp Stone either. Yes, okay. Why, why are Clock Elixirs a thing in this game anyway? 
Sen and Miranda, okay. Old oh, man, I'm just trying to go in here. Because bards are way cool. Sorry, I'm not gonna not sing along with this. I might want to give her something. There we go. What? Oh, did I do that wrong? Should I not have done that? This game definitely has unique flavor, and I love it. There's a thing I was going to say something about. Um, debatable, but they're working on it. Git, git, which is actually, that's great. Might be harder for... Oh my god, this song. This is the Coliseum song. Wall ring, not to be confused with wall chicken. <laughs> the music got louder when we went in here. <laughs> in any case, you're probably broke. Hey now, I'm not broke. I'm a king. You should be impressed by me. Like what is sh sure no problem supposed to be? I mean, they're clearly whistling, but I don't know. Nuts, he says. Hey, I'll get the treasure chest of it. <laughs> it's like a dormitory. They sleep over here. I know the music is so sad here. All right, we'll get the other treasure chest. That, that would make sense, I think. Did I go the wrong way? I did. I clearly don't remember anything. It is interesting. Oh no, that is that is definitely true, mixing metaphor soup. I hope there isn't like a good thing in those treasure chests if you haven't opened them. Which is what I was thinking. Yes, that potion. Only weak magical powers, so go magic them. Do I need to in? I do not need to in. I got a free heal on Setzer's airship. We can try to get Shadow's dreams if you guys want, but they're kind of a pain to get. Where does this go? Is this a cafe? Yeah. Alright, so I've officially been everywhere here? No, I haven't. Oh no! See, like, things are bad. Best of the Empire and it's bad news for you, buddy! So they built, they built the base because of the Magitech research facility. Shadow is indeed, oh my god, chicken lip. 
This is a cockatrice. All right, well, hopefully they'll get annihilated by my fire dance. My favorite. It's the best. Yes! Oh, so not Vector. Okay, the sealed cave. That makes more sense than what I was thinking. Okay, so the sealed cave is... Right, okay. get better at blitzes. I wonder if it's easier to do them on a proper a proper Super Nintendo controller as opposed to 360 controller having a not very friendly D-pad. Oh, because I didn't know that blue glass. He has a number of kind of gimmicky weapons, and I don't know which ones are good. Well, we'll get that. We'll get them the next chance we get. I don't remember when the next chance we get is, but we'll do that then. Yeah, because it seems that the um, auto crossbow maybe has a uh, has seen better days. No. Silly's so gets de-equipped of her stuff because she's in an opera dress instead of armor. I just figured that out. Interesting. Might be in Vector? Okay, well, we'll get to Vector at some point then. Why am I failing all of a sudden? I was so good at fire dance for so long and then nothing. Okay, well, I guess I'm just gonna steal everybody's junk. All your stuff is mine, except for your blitzes. Sorry. not have a fight stick. My ex-husband has a fight stick because he was into he was into Capcom fighting games. Which is part of why I actually know some things about fighting games, much to people's surprise. Sorry, 
I can't not sing along with this. Weed feeder! Oh no! That's okay. Better that than Sabin, who will absolutely murder my team. As we've witnessed before. Okay, so Locke definitely does... <sighs> I wanted to see what was up that way, Blue Glass. Was there something else that's up north, actually? What is the thing that's up north? Oh, is that the magic check research facility and Vector's not actually where that's located? Hello, friend. Better make tracks. Hmm. Such an interesting translation. Hello. Yes, I know that blue glass. Gonna make short work of you. The sealed cave is on the far east side, though. I don't think I need this stuff. Should I sell my old gear? Perhaps it's less about winning and losing and more about doing the right thing. I didn't realize, wait. So other children have gotten. Huh. Stay here and volunteer to be a soldier. Yeah, so war is bad, and don't do it. This guy right here totally looks like one of the Emperor's guards from, a. um, from, a Star Wars. That's that minor thing that I forgot the name of. Like the shading on the um the shading on the banner is really great. Garm. Why is his name Garm? Why is there a dog named Garm? I don't know. But there is. See what yeah, Sully's. Okay. Back row fighters, huh? Oh man. No! Oh man. Check that out. Stolen Light has the answers. Nicely done, Stolen Light. Thank you. I think... I think Drill goes through. 
armor defense. Yay! Antidote! Good. So, I should actually... What, were you saying that there's something to, like, the north-north that I should go do? Like, is that what you were asking me about not being able to use the map? Because I didn't think I could go straight to Vector. I thought I had to go around. But if I can go straight to Vector from Albrook, that's Albrook, right? No, there's anything in Sen. Yay, levels. <laughs> I got elite experience or, or GPs. Did you see that? Because it's 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 almost five, which means that I should actually shut down because I've got things to do tonight. So I might just save here. All right, well, I think I'm going to go ahead and call it a day. We did, in fact, get through the opera. We might actually beat this game someday. Because, I mean, there's more stuff in the world of, of uh, balance, obviously. Um, but getting through the Magitech Research Facility is pretty far. It's pretty good. Yes, tomorrow we will do Kentucky Route Zero. We might do random DDR streams. Hopefully not at 2 in the morning again, um, but we might do some of those, um, and we will be picking up with Twilight Princess properly next Tuesday. Thank you for being understanding, given the circumstances of why I didn't do anything. Thank you, Blue Glass. Um, if you have any questions about things that you would like to hear me ramble about related to this game, do let me know. Eventually, we will get to the point where I have a, an entire thesis statement or something like that, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, yes, have an outstanding Wednesday. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you later.